a lot of emotion today, but one thing's indisputable. America's not going to stop exploring. Thank you, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavor, and our ship Atlantis. Thank you for protecting us and bringing this program to such a fitting end. God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. This is a share of Atlantis Dodge STS-135 Commander Chris Ferguson as they closed out the 30-year career of the space shuttle program on this day 13 years ago. The end of the program marked NASA's big failure to the reusable type of vehicle, specifically creating a reliable and rapidly reusable thermal protection system. Fast forward to now, when Elon Musk tries to build Starship, a fully and rapidly reusable rocket like an aircraft, he also ran into the same trouble with the heat shield. However, he is always confident that he can solve the problem much better than NASA. So, what did Elon Musk learn from NASA's mistakes to improve his system? Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. SpaceX's rapid success seems to be something surreal. Donald Trump highlighted that in his presentation on July 20th. And you know, Elon, I love Elon Musk. Do we love him? I love him. You know, the first time I ever saw this, I'm watching television like three years ago, and I see a rocket engine, motor engine, come down landing straight up in there, no wings, no nothing, and it's landing. I thought I was seeing things. What is that? And it's landing on a barge in the middle of the ocean. And then another one comes down, and another one, another one, I guess four of them came down, three or four, and they land upright. I said, what the hell was that? I've never seen that before. Now, if that were government, you wouldn't see that for another 50 to 100 years. Why can SpaceX do that? To be fair, one of many secrets is to stand on the shoulders of giants. NASA's mistakes and failures have left the successor with many precious lessons, including think outside the box. Most notable are the lessons from NASA's space shuttle project, particularly the problems with its thermal protection system, TPS. It's safe to say that, not by chance, the agency finally had to cancel the program, even though originally they expected that it could be a game changer. The failure to create reliable and rapidly reusable heat shields was a key driver of NASA's decision. Elon Musk also doesn't deny the technical challenges in producing and perfecting TPS, as he said in an interview with Everyday Astronaut. So the most important, the toughest remaining problem is a, a reusable orbital heat shield. So. There's never, nobody has ever made a reusable orbital heat shield. So the space shuttle is closest, yeah. uh, but that took, I think, something like nine months and thousands of people to refurbish. Nine months and thousands of people to refurbish. For Elon Musk, it doesn't seem to be the so-called rapid reusability that NASA advertised about its shuttle. So we need to go much faster. How can they do that, though? Little things make big things happen. In the case of the shuttle, Elon Musk found out that even the smallest errors could result in disaster. The Space Shuttle's heat shield was a complex system comprising approximately 35,000 individual tiles, each requiring meticulous inspection and assessment between flights. This extensive process significantly added to the time and effort involved in post-flight operations. Additionally, most of Shuttle's thermal tiles lack uniformity, meaning they have different shapes. So when a brick in a particular location drops, they have to create a new one specifically for that location. Starship, on the other hand, just has 18,000 tiles in total, minimizing the time and effort for refurbishment after launch. Its bricks are more uniform, so SpaceX only needs to produce large quantities and then replace them if needed. This difference comes from the different shapes between the two vehicles. If the space shuttle is shaped like a space plane, the Starship is shaped like a giant steel bullet. The space plane shape has complicated corners, requiring various types of heat shields, as not simple as the bullet shape. The shuttle was designed according to requirements set by the military. The crucial factor in the size and shape of the shuttle orbiter was the requirement that it be able to accommodate the largest planned commercial and military satellites and have over 1,000-mile cross-range recovery range to meet the requirement for classified USAF missions for a once-around abort from a launch to a polar orbit. However, the design of spacecraft also has to fit into atmospheric re-entry to ensure their safety and effectiveness. The space shuttle utilized a blunt body design that effectively managed shock waves during re-entry. This design created a bow shock wave in front of the vehicle, which helped to keep intense heat at a distance from the shuttle's structure. 
allowing it to withstand the extreme temperatures encountered during re-entry. The shuttle's underside, which faced downward during descent, was specifically engineered to absorb and distribute heat through its thermal protection system, TPS, composed of specialized tiles. In contrast, SpaceX's Starship takes this concept further by integrating a cylindrical, rounded shape with a blunt body design. This innovative combination enhances aerodynamic efficiency and allows for a more uniform distribution of heat across its surface. The larger surface area relative to its volume not only aids in heat radiation into space, but also improves the vehicle's overall thermal management during re-entry. This design could potentially reduce the risk of localized overheating, which is crucial for the integrity of the spacecraft. Starship's innovative design which combines a blunt body with a cylindrical shape, offers several key advantages for managing heat and drag during atmospheric re-entry, including, firstly, reduced heat shield complexity. The cylindrical shape minimizes the number of specialized heat-resistant tiles required, simplifying the manufacturing, installation, and quality control processes compared to the space shuttle's more complex geometry. Secondly, enhanced drag coefficient. The cylindrical shape plays a crucial role in increasing Starship's drag coefficient, which is advantageous during re-entry. A high drag coefficient helps to slow down the spacecraft more effectively in the upper atmosphere. By reducing speed early on, Starship can distribute the heat load more evenly over a longer period, preventing thermal hotspots and decreasing the risk of damage to the vehicle. Thirdly, gradual deceleration for safety. This gradual deceleration is essential for maintaining Starship's structural integrity and ensuring the safety of any crew or cargo aboard. The combination of a blunt body and cylindrical shape allows for a more controlled and stable re-entry, reducing the risk of rapid deceleration or uneven heating that could compromise the spacecraft's structural integrity. Nevertheless, the technical advantage is not the only thing making SpaceX successful. Deep down, it's their unique and innovative approach to manufacturing and testing rockets. SpaceX's approach to spacecraft development, particularly with the Dragon and Starship programs, emphasizes real-time testing over extensive theoretical modeling. This strategy has several notable advantages. SpaceX prioritizes real-time testing to gain practical insights that computer models cannot fully replicate. While simulations provide valuable data, they often miss critical performance characteristics that only emerge during actual flight tests. For instance, issues with SEALs were identified early in the development process, allowing SpaceX to address them proactively, unlike Boeing which discovered similar problems during missions. The company concentrates on the big stuff, meaning they prioritize significant performance factors that impact mission success. This focus enables engineers to avoid getting bogged down by minor issues until they become critical during testing. Elon Musk's hands-on involvement often encourages teams to streamline their effort, ensuring they concentrate on what truly matters for the spacecraft's performance. By embracing a testing-focused approach, SpaceX has been able to move quickly and efficiently, achieving significant advancements for a fraction of the cost compared to traditional aerospace companies. This agility in development is a key factor in SpaceX's success, enabling them to iterate rapidly based on real-world data and experiences. NASA seems to have had no chance to research and apply those things in the space shuttle because they encountered a big problem in the shuttle era, Go Fever. The Go Fever disaster was caused by an incredibly ambitious launch schedule, which imposed significant pressure on NASA's upper-level management. For that reason, during the 80s, there was a noticeable shift in NASA's approach with a gradual relaxation of safety protocols. Tragically, this ultimately led to two fatal disasters in the space shuttle program, serving as a stark reminder of the consequences that can arise from compromising safety for the sake of face or something. It explains why as SpaceX sets its sights early 20s for Starship's inaugural flight to Mars, it is imperative that they avoid treading a similar path of cutting corners to meet self-imposed deadlines. Honestly, this is not the first time the image of the sleek nose cone has appeared in the media. Since April, we have seen numerous nose cones in the Star Factory for the new ships, in addition to pathfinders to commission on the new factory tooling. The common point of them is a clean look, and even naive, lol, meaning by then, they were all still incredibly early in production.
Because they were not yet to be outfitted with TPS and their internal hardware, all of them were naked. Compared to the predecessor, V2 nose cones share the same shape, not any blunter or pointier. Fast forward to July, when the new nose cone is brought to the outside, it has actually fired us up. Many commented that the old version looks odd now to them. The new one looks a lot shinier. So how can SpaceX make Starship look so beautiful over time? To answer the question, let's come back to the wild day of Starship. If you've been following Starship from the very beginning, you will know that the first Starship prototypes looked incredibly rough. Not like something that could ever survive a journey into space. Over time, Starship has become sophisticated, with significant improvements in the quality of the metalwork and welding. This progression is a result of SpaceX's iterative design process and rapid prototyping approach. The early Starship prototypes, such as MK-1, had a very rough appearance due to their focus on proving the concept rather than achieving a polished final product. These initial prototypes were more about learning and refining the manufacturing process than creating a flight-ready design. However, as SpaceX continued to test and iterate, subsequent prototypes like MK3 incorporated lessons learned and featured more advanced designs intended for orbital flight tests. It's the reason why in December 2018, the company decided to switch from carbon composites to stainless steel, contributing to the improved aesthetics. Stainless steel can be polished to achieve a smooth, reflective surface that enhances the visual appeal of the spacecraft. This polished finish not only gives the Starship a sleek and modern look, but also allows for a uniform appearance across the entire structure. In contrast, carbon fiber often has a rougher surface due to its woven texture and resin matrix, which can detract from a polished aesthetic. Secondly, stainless steel is more resistant to scratches and damage compared to carbon fiber. This durability means that the aesthetic quality of stainless steel can be maintained over time, as it is less likely to show wear and tear. Carbon fiber, while strong, can be more susceptible to surface damage, which can affect its appearance and require more maintenance to keep it looking new. Thirdly, the manufacturing processes for stainless steel allow for more intricate designs and shapes without compromising structural integrity. This flexibility can lead to a more sophisticated look in the final product, as designers can create smoother lines and more complex geometries that are visually appealing. Carbon fiber components, while strong, often require thicker sections to maintain strength, which can limit design options and impact aesthetics. Next, stainless steel can be easily integrated with other materials and components, allowing for a cohesive design that enhances overall aesthetics. In contrast, carbon fiber may not blend as seamlessly with metals due to differences in thermal expansion and mechanical properties, potentially leading to a less harmonious appearance. Last but not least, stainless steel is often associated with high-tech applications, particularly in the aerospace and automotive industries. Its use in Starship contributes to a perception of advanced technology and engineering excellence. While carbon fiber is also viewed as a high-tech material, its aesthetic appeal is often linked to specific applications, such as sports equipment, rather than the broader industrial context. On the other hand, this doesn't mean the stainless steel is perfect. Welding stainless steel requires a high level of expertise and precision, a great challenge in terms of skill even for the most experienced welders. Furthermore, the inherent non-recoverable nature of the metal leaves no room for imperfections eliminating any margin for error or subpar craftsmanship. The initial welding technique which was applied on MK1 is flux core. This method involves passing an electric current through a wire, creating a spark between the wire and the metal to melt them together. This melted metal fills any gaps or imperfections. However, flux core welding on Starship was done by welders with no rocket experience, often outside in a tent, resulting in poor welds with cracks and corrosion. To fix the problem, SpaceX ground down the welds to remove defects and strengthen them, but this didn't fully solve the issues. Therefore, they took a further leap with the next prototype, SN1. They used thinner single sheets of 304L stainless steel to reduce the welding needed, and the 304L stainless steel is much more resistant to corrosion when welding. Not that enough, they also upgraded to using tip-tig welding, which allowed for cleaner, deeper welds with less warping. 
with fewer individual welds needed to connect the spacecraft's parts, the risk of failure decreased significantly. SpaceX also automated much of the welding process using robotic machines to improve consistency by acquiring robotic welding machines from companies like Liberty and KUKA, similar to the ones seen in Tesla's factories. Additionally, they added more internal stringers to prevent buckling of the hull. The evolution continues as SpaceX embraced laser welding for many sections of Starship. Laser welding allows the heat to penetrate deeper into the metal, thus entire ring segments are welded in a single pass. However, for further weld strength enhancement, an additional step was essential. This ties into a shift in Starship's construction approach. Instead of employing a complex process involving smaller rectangular steel panels meticulously welded together to create rings as in the original prototypes, SpaceX decided to directly utilize complete coils of steel. These coils were strategically positioned on specialized supports, resulting in a perfectly circular diameter of 9 meters. These steel rings underwent a process known as cold rolling. The cold rolled steel is below its recrystallization temperature when it is formed. This means the steel won't be as formable, requiring stronger mills to produce accurate cuts. As a result, the final shape of the product won't change as much as it would in hot rolled steel applications. This process involves pressing the metal through rollers to compress it and elongate its grains, making it stronger. After the coiled wires are skillfully rolled and cut, the steel enters the final phase of transformation, welding together individual steel segments, seamlessly transforming them into a continuous and sturdy ring. But during welding, the heat softens the metal in that area again. Planishing involves hammering down the welds until they match the hardness of the surrounding metal. This not only increased weld strength, but also improved their appearance. Following this, the steel rings, or what SpaceX often refers to as rings, are lifted onto a specialized fixture and stacked together, then welded. This innovative approach not only saves assembly time, but also reduces the number of individual welds, thereby creating a more spacious production environment for Starship. Additionally, cold rolled steel provides precision and cleanliness of the finish. This makes it ideal to use in technically precise applications where aesthetics are important. However, cold rolled steel goes through additional processing which makes it more expensive. Products made from cold rolled steel are stronger and harder than other steels due to their shaping happening at a lower temperature. This helps the steel's hardness and resistance against deformities increase. One potential downside of this treatment is the fact that unexpected warping may occur as a result of internal stress that takes place within the material. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.